This is the Think Maths Guide to Solving the Rubik's Cube, Steps 6 and 7. Step 6, the yellow corners. Okay, so now you've got your uh, yellow crust still on the top, and you've got all the corners in the correct positions, but not the correct orientations. Oh, well, some of them are, so if we're lucky enough here, you can see that the, uh, the red-green one is already facing the correct way, and over here, the blue-orange one is already facing the correct way, uh, but these two are not. Uh, so what we're going to do is use our very first sequence. We're going to use the corner swap sequence to orientate these the correct way. And uh, I'll show you how this works, and you've got to bear with this method. It looks a bit messy in the middle, but you will come out fine on the other side. Uh, so the first thing you do is uh, you get the first corner you want to reorientate, and it, you still have the yellow as the upside, and then you position it so the corner is on the right at the front over here. So this is the right one, uh, and there's the one we want to reorientate. And you do what we did before. You use the uh, corner swap to move it out, and the corner swap again to put it back in again. So the corner swap out is one, two, three, four, and then you put it back in again. One, two, three, four. Okay, still facing the wrong way, so we do it again. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Okay, so there it is. We've uh, swapped in and out enough times it's now facing the correct direction. You might be a bit startled if you look at the rest of your cube, uh, which is a bit of a mess, but it's okay. It'll come good. Uh, you've still got another corner to reorientate. The important thing is you don't move the cube. Keep the cube exactly where it is. All you spin is just the top layer to bring the other one you need to do around to that same front right corner. And then you use corner swap again to move it out. So corner swap for out. And then corner swap for back in again. Uh, and you'll see it's now facing the correct way and magically, well, and mathematically, the rest of it has gone right back where it should be. Uh, you can now put this, this is the red-blue corner, put it back where it belongs. You've now got all the corners in the correct place with the correct orientation. Uh, and this works even if you have more than two corners out. So for this cube here, you can see it's all solved apart from these three, which are in the correct place but the wrong orientation. Start with any of them, so you put it in the front right-hand corner corner swap it out and then and keep going until it's back in again with the orientation that, no, that you want. Uh, the only risk with this of course is if you don't do all the corner swapping correctly so you don't do all four moves every single time it won't all oh, another one it won't all go back where you want it at the very end of the process so it's slightly dangerous in that regard. Okay last one again this is a mess uh, last one corner swap it out corner swap it back in again, wrong orientation, still a mess, okay, swap out, and then finally swap back in again, and everything else down here has fixed itself, and again, if you put the blue orange back where it belongs, you can see that all these are the correct position and the correct orientation. Step 7, the edge spin. Okay, you are now so close to the end. You've done everything apart from these last edge pieces that are in the wrong place. Because uh, when we made that yellow cross, we didn't care what orient, well, what order these edges are in. We just wanted them in the correct cross formation. But as we can see now, the orange one needs to be over here and the red one needs to be over here and so on. Uh, we're lucky enough we got one correct though. It just so happened the blue one was already in the right place. Uh, the other ones are out though. In fact, when you get to this almost finished stage, you'll have one of two situations. You'll either have this one, where three of them are wrong and one is correct, or sometimes you will be unlucky enough to have all four that are incorrect. Uh, in fact, there, there is a fairly straightforward way to take the case where all four are wrong and quickly turn it into a case where just three of them are wrong, and from there you can solve it. So I'll come back to that case uh, a bit later on. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to fix it when only three of them are wrong. Now, uh, just like before, when we had the two corners we had to swap, we had the uh, corner spin uh, sequence, we've now got an edge spin sequence. And if you look at this, you will see that uh, if you spin them all around by one, you can always fix it. So in this case, the green one has to come down here, the red one has to come down here, the orange one has to go back up here. So they have to go around that way. 
The other option would be, of course, they have to all spin the other way. And I'll show you how you can do the edge spin in either of the two directions. So here's, here's the edge spin sequence. In this case, they need to go around uh, clockwise. So this is the clockwise edge spin. There is a very easy anti-clockwise edge spin. Uh, to do the clockwise edge spin, you uh, well, for any of them, you always start, uh, of course, still yellow is the top. You have the one that's been solved already on the left. And you have the ones that need to be changed are on uh, the front, the back, and the right. And so you take the right and you do uh, 180 degree spin all the way around. And then now you decide, wait, did I need to do the clockwise or the anti-clockwise edge spin? And I need to do the clockwise edge spin. And so you take the up face and you give it a clockwise twist. If you needed to do the anti-clockwise edge spin, you just do an anti-clockwise spin there. Everything else is exactly the same. You now take the front, give it a clockwise, take the back, give it an anti-clockwise, which is actually, you're basically tilting them both off this way. You then do another 180 over here, and then you bring them back up again. So the front you bring up anti-clockwise, the back one you bring up clockwise, and then you actually do the same move again. So if you're doing the anti-clockwise edge spin, you'd go anti-clockwise. If you're doing the clockwise edge spin, you go clockwise. It's fairly easy at the moment to see though that you do want the white ones to end up back over there. Everything else lines up. And all you need to do now is that final 180 to bring it back up again. And so that is the solved cube. Uh, for the case where you had four wrong, where you can choose. You can do a clockwise or an anti-clockwise edge spin. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way it starts facing. It will always fix at least one of the edges. So let's start this way and we'll do the anti-clockwise. So you give the right 180. You now go anti-clockwise on this. And then you go that way, that way, back around, that way, that way. Again, anti-clockwise on top and then the 180 to put that back. As you can see now the green is fixed, but these three are all wrong and they need to go, the red needs to come up, the orange needs to go down, the blue. okay, so actually, oh, nice, this is an anti-clockwise one, so we'll give that a go, you give that a 180, you give it an anti-clockwise, spin, spin, 180, spin, spin, anti-clockwise, and spin it around, and you've done. You can now solve the Rubik's Cube.